Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to Forza Motorsport 4. Today is episode number 49. If you guys are enjoying the content, then be sure to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, and feel free to hit that join button as it really does help support the channel. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. So, the thing with the Crew Motor Fest, right? So, I love... I actually really enjoy the format of Motor Fest. The fact that there are playlists... And you go through it and you have these themed events, like... I really love that idea. And it's very similar to what Forza does. You can cut that out, right? Oh yeah, 100%, I'll cut it out. <laughs> um, but yeah, with how... Uh, what's it called? The Crew Motorfest is... There's a format there, and I hope that the crew does it, where they can become permanent playlists. Like, they can go, right, we're adding new playlists for you to play, but I can come back in a month's time and play them when I want to, when I have the time to play it and enjoy it. As soon as they announce... Oh yeah, here's a limited time playlist. Fuck the game. The game's in the bin for me. I hate limited time events. Right, and I... I for games like F1, where they have like exclusive liveries and it's very difficult to just have an event there. Even if there was an option to buy the livery afterwards. Yeah, that's fine. Forza, again, it's very difficult to make that playlist and make it permanent. Because of the way that playlists are in Forza, so they do all this limited time stuff and it just spoils the experience. But they don't offer the option that you can buy the cars afterwards, or unlock them some other way. Whereas when it comes to the Crew 2, the playlists, they're basically, the game is built on playlists. You have a couple of events that get unlocked, for each play, you make this playlist up, there is nothing stopping them from making it a permanent playlist and just having it there as a permanent feature of the game. As soon as they announce limited time playlist, I won't be happy. I won't enjoy it. Hence why I'm waiting a couple months. But if they're announcing like a couple of extra playlists, every few weeks even if they added a playlist a week which is like five or six races that is enough for me knowing that they're going to be adding those events and that those events will stack and they'll be there for me if i come back to it three four years time the thing that i absolutely love right when they add content to games is when you come back to them in a few years time and all that content is there with my message deleted. Uh, I didn't see it. I saw, I like the Motorfest, but too expensive for my level enjoyment. That was the last message I saw. So probably YouTube might have deleted it. Not too sure on that one. Um, but yeah, like, for some people, Motorfest, like, I like the map. I think it's alright. I think it's a good quality map. I think it's on the slightly small side. But I don't see why in a year's time, after the game's been out for a year, hey everyone, we're releasing the second Hawaiian island. Because Hawaii has multiple islands, but there's only one island that is known. In racing games, it's always the same one. It's Honolulu and is that it? I think it's, that's what it's called. But that's the main island that they always use. Test drivers used it. The crew has now used it. It'd be nice to see them go, right, well, we've got another map. And it, it won't bother me if 
you have to, you know, get a ferry across or whatnot, or the maps are completely separate. There's no way to drive to the other map. You just have to load in. That wouldn't bother me because here's the thing. Test Drive Unlimited did that. I think they could quite easily get a second map made, do a big DLC drop in a year's time, and they'll get so much hype for that. If they were to drop another one of the Hawaiian Islands as another map, even if it was paid DLC, they could get away with that. Because if they add six, seven, eight playlists to the game, and then add a weekly playlist, or even every two weeks add a playlist for the new islands, like, they could quite easily get away with it and still have an enjoyable game. Again, I don't know how the Crew Motor Fest is going to handle future stuff, so... You get one bigger map separated by a large bridge. 100%. 100%. I don't think the large bridge idea would work too well, just because the distance between the Hawaiian Islands is quite significant. So you would have like a two or three minute drive on a bridge. But it is possible. And again, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Even if there was like a fast travel point at the start of the bridge and it fast traveled you to the other end. Again, however they decide to do it, that part wouldn't bother me. I think they do need to add another map. And I think it'd be a great idea to see um, another map for well, whatever, really. Realistically, I just want to see the Crew Motor Fest absolutely pop up. And by the looks of it, and reviews people are enjoying it and i think that's what we need back in racing games is just enjoying games like having a fun a slightly varied experience to the norm but adding content giving that exciting nature to the game i mean they did a great job improving the handling model so that's definitely helped in their favor But I, I am waiting on both a sale and for it to be available on Steam so I can play it on the go. Also, for them to remove Battle Eye. Uh, it, this is one of my bugbears with Ubisoft at the moment. So they seem to be obsessed with their own anti-cheat engine that they've made. Which A, doesn't work because people still cheat with it. And B, I, I physically don't see the point in having an anti-cheat in a racing game. Oh, there's leaderboards though. Fuck the leaderboards. No one cares about leaderboards. I don't care about leaderboards. I just want to play a racing game. Let me play a racing game. For things like Rainbow Six Siege, yeah, that makes sense because it's a competitive game designed with competitive in mind. The Crew's never been a competitive game. People go on it to enjoy cars, to drive. Yeah, they've got the summit, but fucking get rid of the summit then if you don't want the competitive nature of it. Like, I, th I think they'd do better off without the summit and having in just putting a playlist a week and having the exclusive rewards put in the playlist. Don't make them limited time. Believe it or not, FH5, there are modders that cheat because they don't want to drive in driving game. But that's what they want to do. Like, me personally, I don't want... I wouldn't want that. I enjoy driving in a driving game. But there are people that just want to look at cars. Let them look at cars. They're paying a lot of money to look at cars, but let them look at cars.
And as much as I don't agree with hacking and modding accounts, how else are you supposed to get those cars? Because you can't. And I think that's the fault of Forza. If Forza added cars that were permanently in the game that you could access, modded accounts wouldn't be a thing. I know that for a fact, because do you see people making modded Gran Turismo accounts? Yeah, I mean like NPC cars, yeah, fair enough. But like, there are cars that you can't get because they're locked behind festival playlists. Those exclusive things, yeah, it's, it's piracy in a way. Uh, no. No, it's not piracy. But like... To buy an account that's got everything unlocked... It sort of makes sense when a game literally will only give you a small window of opportunity to get something. Otherwise, you can't get it. You pay all this money for a video game and then they say, Oh yeah, half of the content that we're going to release, you can only get if you play the game. If you don't play the game, you don't get this content. And then some people will be in their corner defending them like, Oh, but but it's free content. It's not content you were expecting. Like, Well, no, but we've come to expect DLC content from Forza, but they used to add it and keep them for a significant amount of time. And now... Now they're adding all the cars, but you can get them for free instead of paying for them. But you only get them for a week. At least give me the option to buy it with real money. I'll buy a fucking car pass that unlocks all the playlist cars. I'll pay an extra 50 quid. I'll pay 150 quid and have that ultimate, ultimate version that gives me everything. Give me that option. But they don't. So realistically for them, it's even fucking money. So, I don't see why they wouldn't. From a business standpoint... Like, I don't work in business, but I feel like business is that easy that offering those cars for a paid option and you can just get them and have them unlocked instantly, I feel like that would be a good market. They would get money. I would be happy. Win fucking win. It's such a huge issue in the gaming industry right now. <clears throat> the issue is, I get that it's difficult. Well, actually, no. No, I don't get that it's difficult. Because it's not. The difficulty to add a game and implement it fully into a game... It's just as challenging as building a live service model that you can just update every single update and add and remove features. Surely adding content is easier than adding and then removing it and adding something else in its place. Hey, when Google assumes that I don't have a girlfriend, it keeps showing me day apps, game ads. Yeah, no, I get the same as well. Whoop. I swear Google has a specific category. It will just, like, organize viewers. And it will say, right, this guy's a virgin. We're going to categorize him in this category. Neither do I. Oh my gosh, the Ferrari binned it. I need to try and get past Mr. Koenigsegg. Ultimate Virgin. That would be my, uh, if I was creating a Starfield character, that would be my perk. Ultimate Virgin. Way right up the inside.
nothing back to If <coughs> you've seen you me. Oh, Not bad. That'd be my perk in Cyberpunk. Female NPCs won't see me. I'll be invisible to them. Damn. I actually really want to get that new Cyberpunk DLC. I hope that they do another DLC like this, though, for Cyberpunk. Because I feel like Cyberpunk's world, they're, they're not going to be making another Cyberpunk game anytime soon. They could quite easily be making two, three, four DLCs for that game. I think it'd be good to keep the game alive, to keep making DLCs for it. But I've been hearing this new 2.0 update is actually really, really good. Be a good perk against female villain, right? Yes, 100%. She wouldn't see you, so you could stealth your way through and just like... Insta-death. Using you to don't hold back, hold nothing back tonight. I will let you take control. Joe, it sucks having no money in your bank account. I'm literally sitting here with zero money in my bank. Because I spent it all on the subathon, the memberathon stream. No, no, no. Uh, uh. I spent quite a significant amount of money on that subathon stream to uh, have things to do, content to make, that kind of stuff, and. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't finish the way that it planned, so I definitely need to What you got for fuel and tool paycheck? Yeah, 100%. I definitely ex exceeded the spend. The amount that that stream cost, it didn't make that money back. So I, I spent money on that stream, um, which sucks, but that's the gamble you take with YouTube. I might start seeing about streaming on Kick though, as like a second platform. It is what it is, right? Yep. That's all we got to say. It is what it is. The thing is, when you look at it from a logistical standpoint, and, like, you look at it numbers-wise, my entire career, like, YouTube career, I could quit my job right now a full-time content creator if everyone that watched a video joined on bronze tier like that's how 
the money for that tier is so small that everyone could join it. And obviously, it's not how it works. People just won't support channels if they don't watch it enough. Or, I don't, I don't know. Like... But based off of numbers and literally on paper, how much I could afford, how much like rent is, bills, whatnot, it could all be paid for if everybody that watched the video was joined on the bronze tier, at a minimum. And that's the cheapest tier out there. And that's not me like saying, oh, everyone should do that. Like, you do it if you want to do it. I'm just telling you the numbers. <laughs> That if everyone did do that, easy. My rent and everything would be paid for. Coming across the finish line. Ta-da! Kick isn't great second platform either. Friend they got similar views as at Twitch. Yeah, but the amount that you then get paid for those views is significantly higher on Kick. And Twitch isn't a platform that's going to be changing for its creators anytime soon. So, <clears throat> uh, I am trying to avoid Twitch where I can. So, it's, it's, it's very much a, a weird... Weird, weird thing. Ah, oh, nope. Whoa! Oh! Holy shit. People up there just collecting so kids of their kids have easy life. Yeah, exactly. There's a there's a lot of issues with the UK where people who are on like working wages. I I'm working wages. Like I'm not even full time. I'm not able to get a full time job. So I'm even below that level and those people are struggling people who have full-time jobs are struggling their work-life balance is so out of whack that they're working significantly more than they should 40 hours a week of work i don't know what the here's the issue right and anyone who manages a business right now if, if you're listening to this Listen closely, because this is not how it should be. So realistically speaking, right, everyone looks at a 40-hour week as the minimum. Oh yeah, if you're working that, you should be able to live. Well, realistically, no. First of all, not everyone is able to get 40-hour week contract. It is not as easy as just getting that. And on top of that, you're not working 40 hours a week. Right, on a day that I work, I have an hour before, well, an hour and a bit before and after my shift that is taken up for work anyways. So realistically, if I'm working a seven hour shift, I'm actually working nine hours because I've got to get to work, I've got to get from work, I've got to get ready for work. That's time that I can't have. So when you're looking at work-life balance, it's not, oh, you're only working 40 hours. You're actually working 55 hours. Oh, yeah, and breaks that you're not paid for as well. That, again, adds time that you can't spend as your life. So work-life balance is a very important thing with life. But realistically speaking doesn't exist at the moment 
Yeah. When you think about it, a normal shift, you end up spending 10 hours. Now, if you sleep like a normal human being and sleep 8 hours, which is what you're recommended to sleep, then you're left with 5 hours of the day that you can spend... 5 to 6 hours of the day is you doing stuff you want to do. But then on top of that, as part of your work-life balance, you have to cook food still, you have to clean, you have to do this, you have to do that. Realistically speaking, humans, once they're in their working life, don't have any time to do what they want to do. They don't have time by the weekend. But the weekend, a lot of the time for me, is caught, is spent catching up with stuff that I didn't get done. Yeah. But once, you, once you've removed all that time that you've got to spend getting to and from work, getting ready for work, you're left with about five hours. Also, Asma, what's up? How are you today? Welcome to the stream. Sorry, I was, I was ranting. But the issue is, so when I was working full time, and I was working full time hours, on my last job I had so much money I didn't know what to do with it but I didn't have the free time to actually spend any of that money so I was just sitting on money 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 I was like I had like three grand in savings at one point and I only earned eight grand from that job because I wasn't there for that long and I had about three grand's worth of savings because I couldn't spend it I couldn't spend the money. There was no way to spend it. Whoa. Whereas when you look at... Yeah. So, realistically, the best work-life balance is a 30 hours... 30 hours a week. Realistically. But then, it's not, because you still can't then afford enough for food and whatnot. So the issue is, the basic bills get covered, and then you just have an excess of shit tons of money. As soon as you cut out 10 hours that week, right, you lose £500 out of your paycheck, and now you can't afford it. There is no work-life balance in the real life anymore. And it sucks. And obviously the adults that have lived before this crisis and everything like that, they'll all go, oh, well, welcome to the real world, kid. No, this is not what the real world should be. This is like modern day slavery, realistically. Yeah, there's a lot more niceties and whatnot, but it, ooh, it's, it's, it's tough. And, like, realistically speak, especially with, like, I, th I think I've gone into this, but uh, I've got, because I'm earning over a grand, approximately, a month, I'm not entitled to anything on helping towards my rent. Which means that I'm then struggling and limping along with about £300 a month spending money. For having these reduced hours. It's it's a tough it's tough. And I'm I'm more than open to talk about like money and whatnot, because here's the issue, right? A lot of people think it's a bit taboo to actually talk about money and whatnot. Oh it's embarrassing. 99% of the time, you're going to be talking to someone who is struggling with money anyways. Like, fucking talk about it. Like, money is one of those things that everyone doesn't talk about, but they should be talking about. But the issue, again, another issue is the fact that the people that are running this world, it it's a select few people. And they're the same people that are 
running these mega corporations that are saying, oh yeah, this is how much money these people should need to live a life. But uh, unfortunately, no. The housing market is fucked to the point that you can't buy a house for a decent price. I've actually found an all right looking accommodation, but it's exactly the same as what I've got. Oh shit. It's 550 a month. So similar to what I'm paying now, bills and everything are all included. And the only thing is that it means I've got to move. But I'm probably, realistically speaking, going to be better off there than I am here. Because here the council don't do anything. I don't even know how you go about buying land in the UK. I don't think anyone actually owns land in the UK. Realistically speaking, I think they're all leased. All I really want, and here's the issue. So a lot of people are like, oh, I want a really big house. I want a really fancy pool. I want a really nice garden. All I want, right, realistically speaking, from a house is a nice living room with a setup in the corner. That would be my setup, right? The living room would be almost like a bat cave or a man cave or a gaming room or something like that. But it would have a nice couch, it'd be big TV, everything like that, and there would be my setup in the corner. Bedroom, which will have a TV and a console, so I could play games before going to bed. A bathroom and a kitchen. That's all I need. Four rooms! Four rooms. I had to remember how many fingers that was then. There's not anything insane. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>